coming in. Awesome. Yeah, that's fun. Okay. <clears throat> what I like best about the Juno and the benefits of the Juno is, I mean, it captures the student's attention nicely. The volume just keeps them more aware. I can be, you know, in another corner of the room talking with another student and still addressing the whole class. And the whole class is still paying attention and it's just another way for them auditorily just to to just really be engaged in what's going on. I like the way the Juno combined with the interactive whiteboard to improve our learning. Well, six times eight. Class? 48. 48. Carry the four. Carry the four, very good, Quan. Uh, eight times four. Um, my favorite thing about the Juno is that when before we had the student <clears throat> Juno microphone, it we couldn't really hear the students and we would miss things that they said. But with the Juno microphone, student microphone now, you can hear the students and they will, they don't mumble and it just amplifies their voice and you can hear them clear. What six times nine? Six, six times, times nine. nine. Four. 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 Class fifty-four. Four. Six times three. Eighteen. Eighteen. Hmm? Eighteen. Six times three is? Eighteen. Um, it's also really easy, too. It's not something that I have to spend a lot of time with messing with or fiddling with to activate or to get going. I can just throw it on and hit the button, and then whenever I'm not using it, just tap the button again, finished until I get another class, and bring them in. And it, once that happens, once I have it on, have the Juno on, it's a simple, truly, it's just hitting a button to make it start. Um, the volume level, uh, it's like easier to hear, and she doesn't have to talk so loudly, and uh, it's like she's right beside me, and it's easier to hear her. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to have a quick, little, simple review of one of our spiraling standards that we have practiced throughout the entire school year. captures the things that we do in school. Um, one of the biggest benefits I see is if a student is struggling with certain concepts or skills and um, say they go home and they're still struggling with it and they have it for homework and they know they have a big test coming up on those skills and they're still trying to master them. Their grown-up can, at home, be watching the lesson, watching my lesson, and then assisting them in the parts that they're lacking and provide that extra practice for them. When I'm at home, I can go on the internet and I can look up things that I didn't understand at school. And if my parents needed help with it, they can also help me by looking it up on the internet. Um, it kind of puts some of the extra responsibility on them at that point, but it also gives them another channel to, to want to succeed and, and to be able to succeed by being able to access the lesson after it's already been taught. Um, alternative classrooms where they're not with me getting the lesson, but they still need that instruction. They can log on to the internet, a Weebly page, or whatever, and they can still see the lesson that we have and still be receiving that core instruction. Okay, now what do we do with the diagonals, class? Add. And we add across the diagonals. Okay, so Alira, lead us in that. Six plus nothing equals six. six. Bring down the six, nothing to add it with. What's eight plus eight? Sixteen. You have a more of a student-driven lesson. Um, you know, other students that may be lacking, if they have a student, explaining the skill to them, you know, it may be more clear in their brain or they may be more inclined to listen and pay attention than if I'm telling them or if I'm wording it the way that it makes sense to me. Uh, what is our product? 5,766. Very good. It's, it's been a great tool to have in the classroom.